see. It looks taller than me, but that's where you can. My dad was craving a fish curry and we found this amazing kingfish in the market so I decided to make this kingfish caldine. Now caldine is typically made with palm frit or mackerel but it can also be made with shrimp. In this caldine which is nice and mild I've added some okra but you can also add cauliflower or any other vegetables of your choice. Before I go any further with this recipe do make sure you subscribe to my channel. I upload a ton of videos every week so make sure that you're subscribed and Ring the bell that YouTube's new bell icon that will notify you every time I upload a new video. Now let's get cooking. I got some amazing kingfish slices here. This is about one pound of fish. You can also use palm frit, mackerel or any other fish of your fancy. I'm going to marinate this very simply with the juice of a lime. One tablespoon of ginger and garlic paste half teaspoon of turmeric powder and salt to taste. I'm going to mix this well together and keep this aside. Now I'm going to work on the whole spices. I have two red Kashmiri chilies here and I'm also going to add one teaspoon of peppercorns, one teaspoon of coriander seeds and one teaspoon of cumin seeds. Unlike a shakuti spice preparation, I'm really not looking to roast these spices here. I'm just warming them up to wake up the flavor. Once cool, into the blender they go. You will notice that I didn't de-seed the chilies. We're only using two and we're also going to be using a whole bunch of coconut later, so we don't need to. Keep processing this until your powder is nice and fine. It's time to work on the wet ingredients. I'm going to add four cloves of garlic, a half cup of diced onion, one cup of grated or shredded fresh coconut. You can also use frozen coconut, just make sure to defrost it before you use. A teaspoon of turmeric powder. This is what gives the caldine its golden hue. I'm also going to add a walnut ball size of tamarind. If this is too hard, you can just soak this in some water or you can even just zap it in the microwave for a few seconds. I'm using the seedless variety, but I've made sure to check that there are no stray seeds. Add all of the ground spices back in. And a half cup of water to begin just to get it moving. This is still looking coarse and it's time to add another half cup of water. Over a bowl, I'm going to pour out all of the caldine masala and I'm going to push it through the sieve using a spatula or a large spoon. Push out as much of that liquid as possible. Take every 
everything that's left over and throw it back into your food processor and I'm going to add another half cup of water and I'm going to process it. Strain this again. In some traditional recipes, this coconut extraction is collected separately and it's referred to as the thick and the thin milk. I really don't see any value in separating this and dirtying another bowl. So into the same bowl this goes. I still have about a half cup left of this coconut mixture so I'm going to add another half cup of water and I'm going to process this one last time. One final strain and this spiced coconut milk is ready. In my saute pan, I'm going to add a tablespoon of coconut oil and I'm just going to allow it to melt. Before I get started making the gravy, I just want to lightly saute my fish. Typically, the fish is added at the end and it's just boiled in with the gravy. But in our household, we're big fans of having the fish sauteed a little bit first. I also think that doing it this way is a better way to store leftover gravy without the fish breaking. I'm not going to fully cook the fish, I'm just looking for some color on both sides. In the same oil, I'm going to add a half cup of diced onions and three green chilies that I've split in half. Pour in the coconut extraction and a teaspoon of salt. I have four to six okra here and I just split them in half and I'm gonna throw them in. Cover and allow the okra to cook. You can also add cauliflower to this dish instead of okra if you wish. Next, I'm going to add a half cup of pureed tomato into the gravy. I just took my tomato and I processed it and threw this in. Now, to be honest, I wanted to add this in after the onion, but I forgot. So, better late than never. This is optional, but to give it some body, I'm going to add two tablespoons of canned coconut milk. It's now time to return the half-cooked kingfish to the gravy and allow it to cook. One quick pick for Instagram and I'm going to cover this and allow it to finish cooking for another five to seven minutes. I really hope this kingfish caldine satisfies my dad's cravings. Levantando seu astral, vem que a festa tá bonita, pra você ficar legal. Thank you so much for joining me on Craving Spit Adventures. I hope you enjoyed this delicious recipe for kingfish caldine. You can make this with any other fish or even shrimp. It's absolutely delicious. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, guys. I upload a ton of videos every week. Do share my channel and my videos with your family and friends. I really hope to hit 50,000 subscribers this year, so I hope that you can help me get there. Also, make sure to follow me on all of my social channels. I upload a ton of behind the scenes footage there. So make sure that you're following me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and even Snapchat. Until I see you next time, do take care. Bye.